الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعد قد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة التوبة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين واغلظ عليهم ومأواهم جهنم وبئس المصير صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقبة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النفاق والرياء اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are starting with ayah number 73 of Surah Al-Tawbah today I've just recited the ayah to you this is one of the very few ayat of the Quran which appear repeatedly in the Quran in exactly the same words. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu jahid al-kuffara wal-munafiqeen wa-ghluz alayhim wa ma'wahum jahannam wa bays al-maseer. This ayah appears in Surah Al-Tahreem also. Ayah number 8 of Surah Al-Tahreem exactly the same words without the difference of a dot or a jot, nothing of difference at all. Now I told you that one of the main themes of Surah Al-Tawbah and one of the main purposes of the expedition of Tabuk were to expose the Munafiqeen now because it was now late, you know, it was ninth year after Hijrah and the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu had already been accomplished as far as the Arabian Peninsula was concerned, Allah's deen was dominant. So now it was high time to expose this fifth columnist part of the society, section of the society, element of the society. So they were, number one, they were exposed because, you know, it was made obligatory for every moment to participate in this expedition. This was the first time. Before that, it was all persuasion, persuasion, persuasion. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, harradil mu'minin alal qital. You motivate them, exhort them. It's better for them to go and fight for the cause of Allah. They will get the reward, you know, in the hereafter. They should rest assured. But it was not made obligatory for every mu'min to go with the Prophet or out, out you know, f- to fight for the cause of Allah. This was the first time. This we call nafir aam Every Muslim had to go. Now, whosoever didn't go, he was exposed in the first instance. Then there were people who made very lame excuses. Now, Muslims knew in this society what they are saying, it is not correct. So, even though the Prophet accepted their lame excuses, okay, if it is so, okay, you are exempted. But you know the people around. The neighbors, they knew what the Bible is saying is wrong. He's just, he's healthy and he's resourceful. He can spend money, everything. There's no impediment in his way. So people came to know of the, of those people, you know, who were the liars, who were not sincere in their iman. This way they were exposed. Number two, you will find these harsh words now here for, for Munafiqeen and the harshest also will come in this very discourse. And that is, Ya ayyuhal nabiyu jahid al-kuffara wal-munafiqeena baghluz alayhim. As I told you many a time, that as far as this world is concerned, the munafiqeen are bracketed with mu'mineen. 
یا آیو الدین آمن دے ور آلسو لیگل مسلمس بٹ ان دس آیا ان دس ورلڈ آلسو دے ہیو بین بریکٹیڈ وتھ کفار او پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم strive against uh, strive hard against the the unbelievers disbelievers the rejecters of the faith as well as these hypocrites wa khluz alaihim and be harsh to them you are lenient by very nature but you shouldn't be lenient to them now because it's the matter of the deen of allah so you have to be harsh to them wa ma wa hum jahannam and their abode is the hell بابیس المسیر اٹس اے ویری بیڈ اینڈ ایول ڈیسٹینیشن دس آیا ایز آئی ٹول یو از ریپیٹڈ ان صورت تاریم ان ایگزیکٹلی دی سیم ورڈس یا حلفون بالله ما قالوا دے ار سویئرنگ بائی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی دیٹ دے ڈیڈنٹ سو دے ڈیڈنٹ سے سو بٹ دیز تھنگز ار ناٹ ڈیٹیلڈ ہیئر وی فائنڈ دیز تھنگز ان صورت المنافقون یو نو ان دی 28 سیکشن 28 پارٹ اف اف قران مجید The, the, the two sayings which are given over there yaquluna lay raja'na ila al-madinati la yukhrijanna al-'azz minha al-'azal wa lillahi al-'izzatu wa li rasulihi wa lil mu'minina walakin al-munafiqin la ya'lamun so that these were some of the sayings of these people abdullah ibn ubay we shall read them inshallah when we reach there but when explanation was called did you say so they said no my god i swear by allah i never said so he must have misunderstood or he is a mischief monger whosoever has you know conveyed it to you yahlifuna billah ma qalu wa laqad qalu kalimat al kufr they have actually said and uttered those words which amount which amount to blasphemy wa kafaru ba da islamihim and they have really returned to kufr after their islam now they here the word islam is used not iman legal islam that is the cover although they have this cover over them to hide their hypocrisy but beneath this cover they have actually gone back to kufr wa kafaru ba da islami wa hammu bima lam yanalu and they tried what they didn't they they couldn't achieve this refers to an incident that when on his way back to madina from tabuk Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was passing through a narrow valley very narrow very narrow there you know some hypocrites they hid and they assaulted Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the valley was very narrow you know the formation was very narrow cylinder formation not many people going side by side at that time some of these munafiqeen they attacked and assaulted him but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him So they did it. They also knew that now, you know, our end is near. We are being exposed. And the attitude is going to be now strict. All the leniency that we have been enjoying of the Prophet ﷺ, it seems, you know, that that period is going to, to end now. So they also tried, you know, their final act of trying to assassinate Muhammad ﷺ while on his way back to Medina. وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا They tried it, what they didn't achieve. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And they were not avenging of anything except that Allah and His Messenger have made them rich by the bounty of Allah. Why? You know, because one of the items on which zakah can be spent was وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبِهِمْ So to soften the hearts of people, you know, who are important, who hold important positions in the society. And if, you know, they oppose, they can do much mischief. So zakah was given to them. And these people, some of the chiefs, you know, these munafiqeen of Aus and Khadraj, they had enjoyed that position. So by having that money from zakah, Now they had become rich. Now they are avenging because Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam have made them rich out of the bounty of Allah min fadlihi. Wa ma naqamu illa naghnahum Allah wa Rasuluhu min fadlihi. Fain yatubu yakuhal Allahum. Now if they repent and mend their ways, it will be better for them. Wa yatawallu 
and if they turn away, if they continue the attitude that they have been taking up till now, now Allah will give them very painful torment and chastisement in this world also and in akhirah, in hereafter also. And there is none in the whole of the earth who can be their protector or helper.